Good day grade 10s. In today's lesson we're going to carry on learning about our trends in the periodic table and we're going to learn about our elements in groups 1, 2, 7 and 8. Let's just talk about these groups for a second. So first of all group 1 are called the alkali metals. Everything excluding hydrogen is the alkali metals. Group 2 are the alkali earth metals also known as the alkaline earth metals. Same thing. Group 7 Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, astatine, your halogens. Remember I said, oh, worry too much about astatine. And group eight are your noble gases. Noble because they don't like to mix with the rest of the periodic table elements. So let's learn about this. But before we do, we need to talk about different numbering. I've already mentioned it in the previous lessons, but let's just talk about it for a second. If you look at this periodic table, you will see that there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way through to 18. Because yes, there are really 18 groups, but if we actually wanted to be specific, if we shove the lanthanides and actinides in here, it gets even more complicated. So don't worry too much about that. But some periodic tables number their tables from 1 through to 18. Other periodic tables, number 1, 2, skip a few, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. The reason for this is because one, these numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, tell us how many valence electrons there are in the periodic table, in the different atoms in the periodic table. So we know everyone in group 1 has got a valency of 1, group 2 has a valency of group of two. Group seven has got seven valence electrons and group eight is full except for helium and well helium is also full but they don't have, helium doesn't have eight, it's got two. But the rest, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon and some random one we don't know about yet, they all have eight electrons in the outer energy shell. So don't be freaked out about the different numbering, just accept it and work with it. Now let's learn about the alkali metals. First of all, they are soft metals with a shiny appearance. When I say soft, I mean think prestic, think putty. They actually are soft. They are good conductors of heat and electricity simply because they are metals. They've got low densities and they float on wind, water, but they are very reactive and they do not occur naturally in nature's elements. Let's have a little look at how reactive they can be in water. Whether you've left school or you're still at school, you can appreciate the sheer fun and mayhem that chemistry can be. There's so much to it. Bunsen burners, mixing chemicals. Very nice. Now, you may have been allowed to mix very small amounts of lithium with water. You may, if with a responsible adult, have mixed H2O with sodium. And you may, under very strict scientific control, have witnessed potassium mixed with water. But the odds are, if you have, it will only ever have been on one of those rubbish science videos. There you go, mate, present. <laughs> These next two are the dog's nuts of the periodic table. They are, if you like, the king and queen of alkali metals. Mix these babies with water, stand well back, and watch the mayhem. And that's just what we're going to do. Mr. Tickle, bring on the rubidium. Here it is. Is that it? Well, it might not look like much, Richard, but it's a highly reactive metal. It's sealed in this glass tube under argon atmosphere conditions, just for safety. Right, so what's going to happen when you drop that in the water? Well, imagine, if you will, letting off a hand grenade in a bathtub. Right out, I'm off. Have that. OK. Good luck. <laughs> OK, Tickle. Drop the rubidium in the water. Stand back, everybody. This one's going to be bad. Now, two grams of rubidium will only react when our specially designed vial dissolves in the water, which gives John a few crucial seconds to get into our safety zone. more like 
like it, only on Brainiac do you get that kind of science. But I believe we can go one better. There is one more alkali metal we can legally use. Yes, Richard, cesium, the emperor of alkali metals, particularly nasty to golf at any time. And that's it. Oh, yes. Brilliant. I like it already. Now, what's that going to do? Well, it is the water. Imagine a depth charge in a bathtub. Fair enough, mate. I'll leave you to it. Good luck. Thank you. OK, John, go for it. Warning, warning, warning. Extreme danger. Clear the area. As our cesium sinks in the water, the rapid generation of hydrogen gas should produce quite an explosion. And it does. Mag! Magnificent. And I think that concludes today's experiment. There is, I should say, one more, even more reactive metal, francium. But for some reason, they wouldn't let us have any of that. So, there you go. Today's lesson, never mix alkali metals with water. Right, so you can see that alkali metals are very reactive with water. They form hydrogen gas and a metal hydroxide, and that hydrogen gas reacts very violently. They also burn fiercely in oxygen. So now we've got a reaction of lithium burning in oxygen. And as you can see, the lithium at the moment is about red hot, and now it starts going white. And for those of you who don't know, white, something that burns white hot like that is in burning at an incredibly intense temperature. So you can see that lithium metals burn incredibly fiercely with our oxygen. So that is lithium burning in oxygen. So they form metal oxides when they burn in oxygen. They are stored in oil with a <clears throat> All alkali metals are stored in oil because they react spontaneously to the oxygen and the water vapor in the air. Now let's talk about the alkali earth metals or alkaline earth metals. So we're looking at beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium and radon. They are silvery in appearance, but you'll notice they're a little bit more crystalline. They are also good conductors of heat and electricity, again, because they're metals, but they're not as reactive as alkali metals, so they can be stored in elemental form in sealed containers. And when they react with oxygen, they form a metal oxide. So now let's look at magnesium burning in oxygen. So we're going to take a bit of a magnesium and burn it into oxygen. And you can see that magnesium burns the bright white light and is very hot and very exothermic. They also react with water to form hydrogen gas and a metal hydroxide, but not nearly as violent as your alkali metals. Now let's look at your halogens. We've spoken about them before. There's fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, acetine. Your halogens are in group 7. They naturally occur in pairs in nature and therefore are called diatomic molecules. Di because they're two atoms, so diatomic molecules. They are obviously non-metals because they're found on the right-hand side of the periodic table. They have very low melting points and boiling points. In fact, they're all gases at room temperature. Fluorine and chlorine look very similar. They're both yellowish green gases and they're very poisonous. In fact, this used to be called mustard gas and it was used in World War I to kill soldiers. So it is a very toxic gas. Bromine happens to be liquid at room temperature. It's the only non-metal and also the only halogen which is liquid at room temperature. It's reddish brown. It is very volatile. It evaporates very easily. So it's actually usually kept in a dark brown um, container, dark brown glass container. Continuing on with the halogens, let's look at iodine. You can see from this picture that iodine is shiny dark book purple crystals. It sublimates at normal temperatures. What does sublimate mean? It means it goes straight from a solid to a gas, skips the liquid phase entirely. Now let's talk about the noble gases. The noble gases are in group 8. We've got helium, neon, argon, and krypton, and then xenon and radon.
So if we look at that, they are very unreactive. They're full outer electron shells, full outer electron shells. They are monoatomic atoms, all of them. They will not bond with anything on the periodic table because they don't need to. They have got full outer electronic shells. Let's look at helium gas. Helium gas is used in modern airships and in balloons. In fact, just recently there was a gentleman who crossed over from Robben Island to Table Bay with a whole bunch of helium balloons and he did it to raise money for, I think it was the Nelson Mandela Children's Fund. They've got very low density and that is why we can use them in airships and balloons. Neon glows when it's heated. And they are used in neon lights, so all those fancy neon lights that we see, that's all your neon gas. So now, you are going to need to learn this information and understand the properties, because you are going to have to know the properties of the different elements, so you can identify an unknown element if you are given specific properties. Let's an example, if I tell you you've got a reactive, reddish brown liquid at room temperature. So let's think about the only liquids at room temperature on periodic table are mercury, which is a metal and it's silvery, and brown liquid, reddish brown, it must be bromine. And that is the type of question you are going to have to be able to solve during your assessment. So please make sure that you've studied your periodic table properly and you've learnt all the different properties so you can answer questions like that. Thank you, grade 10s. Have a wonderful day.